Okay, we're going to change the control arms on a 1979 second generation Trans Am. I've already done one side. You can see the old ones. Those are the new ones. Let's get to it. First things first, jack up the car and take the wheel off. Make sure you have plenty of support. You can see I jacked up both sides and have lots of jack stands. I'm going to have both wheels off at the same time. You can see the new springs over there. In the far actually one old spring one new spring putting in two inch lowering springs on this one i already did it here but take off the two bolts for the brake caliper and hang it up with a bungee cord you're going to want to compress the piston and the caliper before you take it off by loosening the bolts first and then before you take the caliper off stick a pry bar in these vents and pry it a little bit to build some play and compress the piston. I adjusted my steering so I can get to the tie rod. Now I'm going to take off this castle nut, which doesn't have a cotter pin and it should. And then I'm going to use a pickle fork to get the tie rod off. 11 sixteenths. I just did these tie rods a while ago, so I'm not gonna use my pickle fork yet because I don't wanna script the boot, so I'm just gonna hit it with a hammer. It shouldn't be tight. Put the phone down and I whacked it with my dominant hands one time and it came out too easy. Now it's time to take off that link. Take it off and keep all the bushings and washers and pieces in the correct order. Put it back together so you don't lose anything. Before you do that, take a swig of your beverage of choice. All right. The top and bottom are both 9 16 and you're gonna have to put the sockets on at the same time. Hold one at the top, unscrew on the other one on the bottom. Like so. You're gonna grab and hold one at the top. You can take your socket, also 9 16 at the bottom, and you're gonna loosen it while you're holding that one. If you've got an air ratchet, use it. All right, it was really dirty, so I cleaned it up before I go any farther. It's probably really dirty because something's leaking might be my shocks, so I'll probably replace the shocks while I'm at it. Yeah, it's pretty dirty in here. Definitely got some grease coming out of the ball joint, although I realized my power steering was leaking in the past and I replaced it. That's probably what all that gunk is, is old power steering gunk. Because my tie rod's not looking too bad and my shock doesn't look too bad either. So I'll test my shock, might not replace it yet. By the way, I'm doing this because I was getting clunking when I hit brakes and when I turned. That's pretty indicative of worn out ball joints. I figured while I was gonna do the ball joints, I'd do the bushings. And if I'm gonna do the bushings, I might as well do the control arms so I don't have to go through the pain of replacing the bushings. A little more expensive, but a lot easier. Now I am going to loosen that nut, but don't take it off. I'm gonna loosen that castle nut and don't take it off. So remove the cotter pin if you got one. Loosen the nuts. Do not take them all the way off. Leave you know four or so threads on there threaded. And then you're gonna hit the ball joints with a pickle fork. And that will keep your spring from shooting off your control arm down low, right? To be safe. So do not take those bolts off. Just loosen them. And then hit this spindle at the ball joints with your pickle fork. Gonna put the pickle fork. Underneath in there. Same thing up here. I'm gonna put it up in here. You're gonna hit it with a hammer and you're gonna loosen it so the nut catches the spindle on the top and the bottom. Seven eighths, that's what I'm using. Doesn't fit exactly right. It's probably metric. If it's good enough, and it works. Here's a pro tip. When I was doing this on the passenger side, this nut, after I got it off this much, I hit it with the pickle fork and I broke it loose. Did the same thing up top. But after I did so, I could no longer get that nut off and I had to use a whiz wheel and cut off the nut which didn't matter because I was replacing this whole control arm and the ball joint. 
I would recommend you take this nut off completely and then re-thread it back on so you don't have the same problem I did because it seized up. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, got it all the way off. Put it back on. It's finger tight. Hopefully I won't have the same issue this time. But I'm going to leave it very well threaded on there so I do not injure myself. This is at your own risk. Pick a fork. It's hammer time. I'm not going to film myself doing this because I don't want to hit my car, but, you know, hard, man style. Hit it, whack it hard, and it'll come off. All right, done. Took about 10 or 15 whacks with a ball-peen hammer. Too easy. As you can see, I can still manipulate this nut. Even though it is broke free, it's kind of stuck on there with friction. And I just pulled out the castle nut cotter pin with these electrical snip crimpers. Do the same thing up top. Three quarters. So I don't have to hit this one with a pickle fork, but that's what you would do. Alright, they're both loose. Now I'm going to secure this with that jack underneath the control arm. Alright, I realize I forgot to take out the shock, so it's too easy. You're going to do these bottom bolts first. Take those out. And then you're going to use a wrench of some kind. You should probably adjustable to hold on to this. Top stud. And then you're going to use a wrench to unscrew that nut. So take the bottom ones out first, and then take these up, this off, and the shock will come out through the bottom. And as you can see, I'm still being safe here with my jack. All right, I got those bolts out, half inch socket with my air ratchet. Seven sixteenths and an adjustable wrench. Easy enough. There it is. Make sure you don't lose your bushings and washer. All right, now it's time to take these the rest of the way off. So I'm gonna unscrew that. If the stud starts spinning, the ball stud, stick something in there like a pry bar or a pickle fork to keep friction in there so you can take off that nut. I'm gonna take off this one too because I'm supported by my jack stand. And then I'm gonna push this control arm up and remove my spindle. All right, I jacked it up a little bit to relieve some more tension. This is plenty loose now. I'm not worried about it falling off and killing me. Just pick this up. It's a little hard. You might need to pry it up with a pry bar. I only got one hand, so I'm just gonna do it and I'll show you when I'm done. But, take some kind of bar. Put it in like that and lift it up. If I do that right now, the spindle will fall in my lap. So be careful. And there it is. I just pried it up with that pry bar. The spindle fell forward a little bit. And I can just lift it off the nut or the stud. There you go. Got some investigating to do about this. Oil on there. Probably my power steering fluid. Look at this. Garbage. Should not be able to do that. Should be much stiffer than that. So Ball joints definitely need to go. These are these might be original. Oh, they're not original, they're just old. Original ones would be riveted on. These are replacements. Alright, so now I'm gonna slowly lower the jack and I'm gonna stay the F out of the way of this spring. Again, you're doing this at your own risk. But what should happen is I'll lower this down slowly and the spring will expand. And I got the car up high enough that this will not hit the ground. And then when it's mostly expanded, I got less to worry about and I'll kick it. And I probably won't be able to do this with the camera on, but I'll kick it while it's expanded down here somewhere. And that spring should come out. 
I may have to pry it out with a pry bar. We'll see. So I will lower this and we'll see what happens. actually came up out of its seat on its own so god it's dirty in there but I'm not too worried about getting killed now so I'm gonna move this jack out of the way all right I figured out why it's not coming out as easy the bottom of the control arm is hitting my header so I got less room on this side than I did on the passenger side. So I am going to not be dangerous. I'm probably going to go get a spring compressor from the auto parts store and be safe. Okay, to get around my problem with the header, I got a spring compressor. You need this kind. Use that kind. Don't get the McPherson strut compressor. You need this kind. You take these things off and then you hang them on the springs. You get them inside the spring and then you come up underneath through the hole with the shaft and you tighten it up. And then I'm just, I'm gonna keep them close together. I do not wanna compress it any more than I have to just for safety. So I'm doing it. Well, these are the only ones I could really get it in anyway, but it won't compress very much. And then when I let it down, hopefully it'll be enough to just get me out of the control arm after being very, 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 very careful because this is very dangerous. I got this kind of spring compressor and I am only compressing it the minimum amount required for me to pry it out with a pry bar. I would recommend you take this somewhere to get it done. But in case you ignore safety at your own risk like me, this is how I did it. Okay, got it out. I'm sure you can figure out exactly how I did it. Like I showed you. And it's over there. Now that the spring's out, stick a bar in there, lift it up, and you're gonna get those mounting bolts out. You're probably gonna have to put a Rinse on the other side. I'm gonna use my impact. Cracked it, got it off. In the engine bay, I used a three quarter on the nut on the other side. And on this side, I used a breaker bar and a 13 16. I had to use a breaker bar and then I switched to the impact wrench. All right, putting in my BMR upper control arm, you just install it just like you uninstalled the other one. I had to mount this ball joint. It came with the kit, but it did not come installed, so make sure you torque it right. All right, now we're gonna take off a lower control arm. I'm not even gonna mess with this without a brake bar. So 13 16 wrench, 13 16 socket with a big ass brake bar. Both sides. I actually found my ratcheting breaker bar, which is much easier. So if you don't have one, it might be worth buying a ratcheting breaker bar. Okay, got the bolts out. Had to move the steering a little bit. Make sure that your tie rods are not digging into things on the ground so it doesn't knock your car off the jack stands. But now I'm gonna pry and kick this thing out without trying to damage my headers any more than I already did right there. This side was actually very easy. I pulled it right out, no trouble. 10 seconds max. The passenger side was harder. So I had to take a pry bar and stick it up in there and maneuver around and pull it out. And putting it back in, uh, we may have to use the jack to help lift it up and press it in, depending on how tight these uh, flanges, brackets, whatever are. All right, getting ready to put in the BMR lower control arm. Had to go buy new bolts because the stock ones don't fit through these holes. So, 
Make sure when you put in the front one, you go from front to rear. That's how the bolt has it going on the front. These torque to 90 foot pounds. So torque them right. All right, so this one was actually much easier than the passenger side. I was able to just muscle it in. Then thread in the bolts. Remember front to back on that one. I haven't torqued them yet, but I will torque them to 90. Torque wrench. 90 on the bottom, like I said. And then I checked these and retorqued these to make sure they were 73 as per the book. Okay, I just put the spring in there. The flat part of the coil goes on top. See that spring over there? That is sitting the correct way. You see how at the bottom, that part of the coil is farther away, that's the bottom. The close part on the top is the top. And then you wanna make sure that the coil on the bottom lines up with the ramp. So right there. Now up in here, you wanna make sure that the spring is lined up with the feet, uh, the fingers up in there. Make sure it's sitting properly. Right now the fingers are not lined up. So you wanna double check that and make sure they are. So this is wrong. I'll show you the right way. Okay, so this is what right looks like. You should be able to see the fingers seated, or the, the spring seated in the fingers. So I use my phone to look up in there, and you'll see that i supporting this with my jack, but the spring doesn't line up quite right. I will fix that with a little pry bar, but you see how the bottom of the spring you want it to seat against this ramp on these A-arms. On stock A-arms, you want it in between the two little holes. So I'm gonna put a little pressure on this with the jack and then I'm gonna pry this in so it doesn't come out of the fingers up top. Okay, so what I did to make sure this seated properly, you can see it's right there on the edge, is I had this spring lowered on my jack I stuck this hammer in here and I pried it, I pushed down on it to push that spring in there. So as I was jacking it up at the same time, it would pop into place. So I kept pressure and I did it very slowly. And the spring, the end of the coil was actually over here, farther towards me on top of this ramp. Um, and I had to do that, I had to twist the spring and do that while it was loose and then pop it and it made a big slam when it popped into place, so that's what it took for this one. The other side didn't take that. Okay, so I just set the spindle on the bottom and I'm jacking it up a little bit. And I lined it up with the top. I'm just gonna keep on jacking this up till I can thread the, uh, the ball studs. And then we're going to put this thing back together. All right. <clears throat> so they're just finger tied on there right now, but I released the jack. They're threaded on pretty well. Everything's moving, working. I'm probably going to, I should clean this up. I don't know if I actually will. I'll probably clean off the rotor. There's a lot of oil on it. Time to torque the nuts. Bottom ball stud nut. 90. Top ball stud nut 65-ish. 90-ish, 65-ish to uh, ensure. Well, ensure you make sure you line the holes up though. The castle nut holes so you can get a cotter pin in there. Torqued them down to the right specs. Put the pins in. Put the sway bar link back in. Just stuck it on, finger tight and I'm gonna to torque it down to whatever it's supposed to be torqued to. End link is on. Now I just grab this, stuck it in there and it's still finger tight too. So I'm gonna to torque that guy down. I think it's 60. I'm gonna double check. Okay, 13 foot pounds, 35 foot pounds. 
stabilizer bar end link, 13. Tie rod ball stud, 35. All right, now I'm gonna put, got it on there. Reminder, when you're torquing these castle nuts, if you need to make the whole lineup, you tighten it instead of loosening it to make the whole lineup for the pin. So I reused that pin so it looks ugly. But if that one, that one didn't line up, so I tightened it. Oops. So I tightened it more. The same for the bottom. All right, hung the caliper back on. Still loose. All I gotta do is hit it with my air ratchet, tighten them up again. Make sure you get your brake pads lined up properly. And then take a second to witness the majesty. Okay, it's time for shocks. Put my shock in. I bought load adjusting shocks because my springs are shorter. And <clears throat> I wanted stiffer shocks, so I bought load adjusting shocks, which can sometimes raise your ride height. So now I will not go back above my stock ride height. And if it's a little bit lower, that's good. That's what I kind of want anyway. So I just put the shock in, use the jack to help me maneuver up and down the control arms, install the top part of the shock, and now I'm going to install the bottom. But you see it doesn't have hardware. So I pulled these guys off, speed nuts, lock nuts, whatever they're called, off of my old lower control arm. I'm gonna use my old bolt right there and uh, install shocks. Okay, <clears throat> so I just went ahead and finished. I didn't show you the rest, but this is the passenger side. It's all done. After you do what I last showed you on the tie rod, you basically just put the copper back on, put the wheel on, and you're done. And like I said, I did load adjusting shocks because I got a Monster 455 in this Trans Am. And it was sitting a little bit, still sitting a little bit too high. So I wanted stronger uh, suspension, but a lower stance, so that's what I did. So I'm gonna clean up the engine bay now because I got a lot of wires here, different project, but hopefully this helped you.